Alrighty. So as we showed in the last video, sometimes it's not, most of the time, it's not the most effective strategy to go through and actually manually type out the equation each time. Some people have shown a little bit of lack of trust in the finance solver and have been entering the formulas, but once you get to these annuity formulas, it's just really inefficient. And as we've talked about, time is going to be a really important factor on the CAS um, when you get to exam time. And also, there's a lot of room for little mistakes when you're entering an equation of that size. So we've got this other idea that if you're reusing a formula, you can define it, and then all you have to do is enter the variables each time. So all you would have to do is say P is this, Q is this, R is this, N is this, A is this, um, and it will evaluate for you. So we'll go through an example of how to create one, and what you can actually basically do right now, if you open a new document, you can create your own little program like we've been giving you. So on a new calculator page, okay, two options. One, just type the word define. Again, with the keyboard as it is, I generally don't recommend typing. But if you press menu one, one, it will type the word define for you. So let's take a look. Okay. I'm going to open a new document. Add a calculator page, menu one, one, and it will type the word define for you. Okay. Now, once you've got the word define written, what you'll start with is by typing the name of the isolated variable. So in this case, A is a variable that's just chilling all by itself in our equation. So we'll type A followed by brackets with all the other variables inside. So what you're going to type is A, open bracket, P, Q, R, N. Okay, so those order is very important. So decide which order you want them to be in. And then you'll always have to, when you're entering the value for P, it has to go first. When you're entering the value for Q, it has to go second. So I'll go back to my CAS page, type A bracket P, Q, R, Q, try that again, Q, R, N. And you can actually name your function whatever you'd like, if you'd like to call it whatever your name is. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Okay, then you're going to type an equal sign. And so this is, you'll only have to ever do this once. Type the whole other side of the equation in terms of the variable in question. Okay, so this is a little tedious, equals, and now you're manually typing it out, P times 1 plus R over 100 to the N plus Q times 1 plus R over 100 to the N minus 1 over r over 100. Now, this next step is very important. Double check, because if you press enter, it will store the equation with that name, and you can't reuse the name a until you go back and delete it. So do do a quick triple check that you've entered everything incorrectly. p times 1 plus r over 100 to the n plus q 1 plus r over 100 to the n minus 1 over r to the 100. You go to the end and press enter. It should say done. This means it has permanently stored the value in your CAS. Okay, so let's see if we can. Okay. So, let's just get a picture of that. So that's what it's going to look like. Now we can go through and actually use this tool. So let's just go back and try the two examples that we did um, in the first notes. So in the first example, okay, we had someone who makes an initial deposit of $1,000, a regular deposit of $50 per month. Again, really important, the order P, Q, R, N, R, was 3.5 over 12 and n was 480. If you look back in your notes, we should get $56,280.29. In this scenario, because I just want a, I can type my answer exactly like this. 
Okay, and that does confirm that my equation does work. So now, instead of entering that full equation every time, I just need to enter the four variables in that order, um, and it will do the trick. Now, what if I wanted something other than A? Okay, so the second example we did where we were looking for Q. Okay, so the one example we had where we were looking for Q, okay, we had that A was $500,000. So it's very similar, but this time, because we're not looking for A, we're going to solve for one of the other variables. So we have that $500,000 is equal to A, okay? and now we enter what our other variables were. So the initial deposit for that second question was $500. Q, that's what we were looking for. So we can just put Q right back in there. R, we were getting 4.2% monthly for 540 months, and then whenever we use solve, we need the comma, the variable we're looking for, and we should be getting $310.57. We press enter, Whew, there it is. So instead of typing in that big equation, which was massive, every single time, we can just enter the variable once, okay? So if you're looking for A, you just type it in, A bracket, fill in your variables. If you're looking for something else, solve, value for A equal to with the variables filled in. One little disclaimer I do want to make is that if you try and solve for um, R using this technique, so if we were looking for R instead of Q, it takes a really, really, really long time. So I do not encourage using this method. Um, in fact, I would say just do not ever use this method to look for R because it just, it will give you a runtime error. All right, so that's the tip and trick of being able to store a full function. Okay, so an equation. Now we have a little screenshot there. So this is how to define it and then the two uses for it. So the alternate situation where the CAS can be really helpful is if you are reusing a value many times. So you're doing a whole bunch of questions and in all of them, P is equal to a thousand and you really don't feel like typing those four digits, you just want to type P and have it come up as a thousand every time. Okay? So what we can do is store a variable. So what you'll do, you'll do this in the calculator page as well. So here I'm just going to go back to the handheld view. I'm going to add a problem. So doc insert oops, sorry, I hit geometry doc for one and hopefully we remember the reason for adding a problem is that now all my variables start fresh so if I'd been using this page earlier for other calculations that I've since deleted and some value is stored somewhere when I go to 2.1 I start fresh okay so in a calculator page what we can do is basically give a variable a name so whenever we call that name um, the number pops up so what you will first do is on a calculator page, type the number. Okay. So it might be the result of a calculation or you just type the number. Okay. Then you're going to press, press, say press control plus variable. I'll show you where those buttons are in just a second to get a little arrow. So suppose the value 3.456 just keeps coming up all the time and I'm getting really bored of typing 3.456. I then type control variable so control just above the equal sign and 9 at variable is just above the 9 it gives me this little arrow. So once you've got that little arrow you're nearly done type the letter you want to name that value okay. and you are done. So suppose this value I would like to call x. Okay. Now whenever I type x that value will come up. So if um, that value was your r and you were doing a thousand 
times one plus, instead of typing three point blah, 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 you can just do X over a hundred to the whatever. And it will automatically pull the 3.456 in for the X right there. Okay. So it's just a little shortcut if you do find that you're having to reuse values fairly often. So those are two really great tips and tricks to defining formulas to reuse them or um, defining variables so you can use a value over and over. And that is it.